Hi everyone. I wanted to go over more in depth on paragraphs. Your mind tap assignments this week deal with paragraphs, the chapter on paragraphs itself, and then another activity on writing unified paragraphs. And so I want to touch a little bit more deeply on the components of writing a good paragraph. And I wanted to show you a technique that I developed that you might find useful. So paragraphs are the basis of our essays. They are what make our essays um, relatable and interesting and full of good information. And they are the building blocks of what we do in collegiate writing. And so a few distinctions that you want to make when you start writing essays for college would be to know the difference between a thesis statement and a topic sentence. They are similar in terms, but a little bit different. So each essay that you write will have one thesis statement. It is the main point or main idea of your entire essay. So for this first essay on process analysis, your thesis will have to do with what you're teaching us how to do. So uh, living on a budget in college involves uh, saving money, spending wisely, and getting a job. That might be a thesis statement. So that previews for your audience the three main points you'd be talking about. And the rest of your essay is used to support that. Whereas a topic sentence is in each of the body paragraphs that you write. You can think of a topic sentence like a mini thesis. So each paragraph has its own little structure. And so first sentence is usually your topic sentence. It's what the paragraph is about. And the rest of the paragraph builds around that. But they all go back to support the overall thesis. So every essay has one thesis, but every essay has multiple topic sentences because it has multiple paragraphs. So the topic sentence of a paragraph, and these are body paragraphs that we're talking about, uh, it contains the topic of the sentence. So if I go back to that thesis example of um, budgeting in college, my first main point might be about saving money. And so my topic sentence would, to focus, would need to focus primarily on how to save money. I wouldn't then go into uh, getting a job or spending wisely. I'd go into saving. And it steers the rest of the paragraph, but they all relate back to that overall thesis. It is usually the first sentence of your paragraph. That's the easiest place to put it. That's where most readers look for it. If you read any textbook that is written for college, any um, textbook that you have access to right now. If you want a reading tip, you can skip, skim through and read the first and last sentence of every body paragraph. And that's going to give you the overall main idea of each paragraph. The extra stuff is in the middle, the examples and the details, but the main idea is in the first and last, par in the first and last sentence. So a paragraph is developing one main idea. You don't want to put all of your main ideas or supporting points into one body para paragraph because it will get too big, too unwieldy, and your reader will have a harder time following along. So stick with one main idea in each body paragraph. Good body paragraphs have unity, development, organization, transitions or, co or coherence, style, and sentence skills. And so I'll talk a little bit more in depth about each of those. So when we talk about unity, we're talking about the entire paragraph stays focused on that one main point. So if, again, I'm writing about um, how to be budget wise in college, my first main body paragraph might be on saving money. And so I want all of the sentences in that first main body paragraph to focus primarily on that particular aspect. So we don't need to deviate. We don't need to go into tangents. Here's an example of a paragraph that is not unified. It deals with the same similar topic, um, mental disorders, but it's, it's three sentences that are each different and they are each probably better served as their own unique paragraphs. So it could be something that you talk about in an entire essay, but they don't belong together in this particular example. There's too much going on. In order to have a well-developed paragraph, you have to have support. So you have to have examples. So it's not enough for me to say, you should really save money when you're a college student. Well, if I've never saved money, and if I've never been a college student, how do I know how to do that? So I need to be able to provide examples of how to save money. And that could be um, giving myself a payment 
each time I get paid for my job. So before I do anything, before I pay bills, I set aside 10% of my income in a bank account and I don't touch it. So there's an example. And I would further elaborate on how to do that and how to determine what percentage works best for you. So we need to be able to provide our readers with examples and details to fully explain something to them. Again, remember, you're writing to an audience of incoming college students for this essay. And it's probable that they have not necessarily done some of these things that you're going to be teaching them about and they need details from you. So it needs to have examples. If I were to say cats are better than dogs, I have two cats, love cats, I like dogs too, but I like cats better. And if I were trying to convince you that cats are better than dogs and I said they're cleaner, more independent and less maintenance, therefore they're better. That wouldn't be enough detail or support hopefully to convince you unless you're already convinced of my side anyway. So in order to try to persuade or convince or teach my reader, I need more details than this. So I'm gonna stick with the same premise that cats are better than dogs. I'm gonna stick with the same three main points, but I'm gonna provide more details. I'm not gonna read this entire thing to you, but you can see it here and you can see that it's more fleshed out. I have examples for each of those points. I have transitions. So first of all, next, Lastly, alternately, for all of these reasons and more, cats make better pets than dogs. So I still might not convince you by the end of this paragraph, but I've given you more reasons and more examples to consider my point of view. And that's what you're doing as a writer. You are providing information to give people facts, stats, so that they can make better decisions. And it's not enough for you just have an opinion about something, you have to actually prove it to them. So we move on to organization and structure. As the writer, you determine the main points and you determine what order they fit in. So if you were writing about how to spend $40 in the weekend in lacrosse, you might do a Friday, Saturday, Sunday organization. You might do an indoor outdoor activities organization. So you have to decide what order makes most sense and you have to stick with it. So you don't want to go from Friday and then talking about indoors and then move to Sunday and then backtrack to Saturday. That would confuse your reader. So make sure that you pick a structure or a, a pattern that you think flows well and makes most sense. So if we don't have any coherence, we are missing um, transitions, we are trying to do too many things and not help our reader along. One of your jobs as a writer is also to act kind of as a traffic director. You use transitions to help point your reader to where to go next. And that is best done often with transition phrases. So here's an example of that previous paragraph on why cats are better than dogs, but I've taken all of the transition words and phrases out. It still does the job, but it doesn't do it as well. And it doesn't guide the reader through it as easily. So transitions are used to help your reader more than anything and to emphasize points. There are a couple paragraphs that have special features and functions and they don't always follow the same rules that I just talked about and that would be your introductory paragraph and your conclusion paragraph. And so in your introduction, you let your reader know what you are writing about. You set the tone or mood, what kind of impression you want to leave. Is it a formal or informal or funny or serious piece? You tell us the main points that are going to be covered and you give us your, your argument or your thesis statement. So that is the job of the introduction. Then we move on to the body paragraphs. There's usually going to be three, four, five of those in each essay you write. And then when you get to your conclusion, you're not adding any new information there. You are simply restating everything you've written in the rest of your essay. So you repeat your thesis in some way, maybe not exactly word for word, but similarly, you restate your main points. You maybe restate some of the takeaways that you want us to remember, and you let us know that we've come to the conclusion paragraph that this essay is now finished. So body paragraphs follow a little bit different structure than your intro and your conclusion. And I also encourage you to start with your body paragraph first. It is going to be easier, I think, if you don't try to make the perfect intro right away and instead start with your body paragraphs. And then after you've written a body paragraph or two, you know what you want to say and you can better come back and um, decide what your introductory strategy will be. So when to start a new paragraph is a question I often get from people, and there's not necessarily a rule for this, but um, things to remember would be that if you're moving to a new point, remember your paragraph needs to have unity. So if you go from saving money to um, spending money, that's a new point. 
So we want to then start a new paragraph. If you have two people talking to each other in dialogue, which you might do in your final uh, narrative paper for this class, you will then start a new line. And when you get to, if you, if you visually look at your page and it's like your paragraph's this long, you also have to keep in mind your reader's eyes. And we need some white space sometimes to give our eyes a break. That being said though, um, I often find students' paragraphs are too short rather than too long. So err on the side of length than on the side of brevity. I don't want to see three sentence paragraphs. I would rather see a 12 sentence paragraph, which is what we're going to talk about next. All right. So the technique that I developed is called paragraph math. And this is helpful in um, having some kind of a structure and a specific number to look for when you're building a strong, well-developed, well-supported paragraph. If you are a linear logical thinker slash writer and you like rules and you like facts and the fact that you have to write and it's so abstract and each teacher wants something different, you might find this technique helpful. So for paragraph math, think of it in these terms. You have a topic sentence. That's your introductory sentence that tells the reader what the paragraph's about. That's one sentence. For your topic sentence, you have three main points. So if I'm going to talk about saving money, my three main points I might want to cover would be uh, setting aside 10% of my income in a savings account, um, looking at like CDs, IRAs, 401ks, if I have an employer who participates in those kinds of things, and then um, seeing if my employer contributes to any savings funds. So maybe those are my three points. So those are three more sentences. So now you're at four. But for each of those three points, you need two sentences of detail or explanation. So it's not enough for me to say, to, one way to save money is to go get a money market account at your bank. Well, that's one sentence and it's not very much detail. And if I don't know what a money market account is and I've never gotten one, as a reader, I wanna know more. So you would spend a, a couple sentences explaining that point. So that gives you um, more detail, more sentences. And then the last sentence of your paragraph is your concluding sentence. And in your concluding sentence, like a concluding paragraph, you simply restate what that paragraph's about and you transition us to the next point. This type of technique works better for essays, like what you're doing for your first two, the process analysis and the illustration. It doesn't work as well for storytelling, but it does work well for essays where you have to try to incorporate support and detail and even research. And I will show you an example of what I'm talking about in just a second. So as you start to think about your essay and what your main point will be, you're gonna get your, your thesis or your main point from the topic that you select. So it'll be pretty straightforward for that. But a few things you want to remember. The thesis statement is a statement. It should not be a question. And so you are asserting something and each of you will have different points of view. So the way that you survive on a budget in college might differ from each of your points of view, depending on your own life experiences, beliefs, and uh, what you want to share with the reader. So even though you might be speaking or writing about the same topics, the way you go about those things might be slightly different. So it should be a statement. It should reveal what your topic is, and it should also preview for us what you're going to talk about. It should, um, I had an instructor in college who used to always ask us, so what and who cares about our thesis statements? She wanted us to really think about why should my reader know about this? Well, money and budgeting are things we have to deal with the rest of our lives. And if we haven't really been taught how to do it, it can be pretty important to avoid some pretty big, messy and painful mistakes in our finances. And so if you let your reader know up front that these will save you headache and pain and stress down the road, that's something that I'd wanna know as a reader. So consider asking yourself the so what, who cares test. So I'm gonna transition over to a paragraph and I will place this up on Blackboard so you can see it in more detail. But I've written a body paragraph using paragraph math and I have written it not on one of the topics that you have for your essay, but on a different topic just to uh, stretch the old muscle a little bit. And so you will see I have a topic sentence the first step in traveling on a budget is learning how to pack minimally. And then this entire paragraph talks about packing. Then you will see I have main point one, I have main point two, 
I have main point three, and then I have a concluding sentence at the end. So I don't necessarily want your final draft essays to have these in there, um, the headings of main point one, two, three, but as you are developing your muscles to writing good, strong paragraphs, feel free to do something like this so that you can visually see, okay, here's my topic sentence, here's my concluding sentence, here's my three main points, and here are my points of support for each of those. That's 11 sentences. That might be longer than some of you are used to writing, but I want you to get in that habit of forming these well-developed, well-thought-out, well-supported paragraphs, because that is the basis for writing a good essay. 